Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be setting up a Nginx cluster over at the data center in the new Proxmox environment. We're basically going to be setting up, I think we'll do two Nginx VMs that are highly available, that sync with each other, as well as have a floating IP address between the two to ensure maximum uptime and reliability. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a VM. It's going to be VM UBN 11 sorry, 10, it'll be 10 and 11. If we go to OS, we're going to give it the local storage as well as Ubuntu 24.04. Um, Q35 will turn on QEMU agent and we'll give this 64 gigabytes of RAM. If we go over to CPU, we'll give it two cores and we'll give it and we'll give it 4192 megabyte, megabytes, which is about four gigabytes. Under network, we're gonna give it VLAN number 70, turn off the firewall. Under confirm, we're going to start after created and we'll click finish. Now we'll go back up, create another VM. This is going to be VM dash ubn zero sorry 11 resource pool we'll select bn we're going to start this on node 3 os we're going to switch again go to local storage as well as ubuntu 24.04 system is going to be a q35 once again qemu agent is on 64 gigs two cores 4192 vlan 70 confirm and that's all for the vms and you'll see we have vm 10 and 11 right here and now we're going to go through the ubuntu installers for both of them and get these things set up. I'm going to select English. And as you can see, it gave us the IP of 10.141.70.9. I'm going to screenshot this. Click done. No proxy. The mirror has passed the test. Let's go down to storage. We're going to reconfigure our storage by unmounting the root mount point and resizing it up to the maximum amount of storage available. To take advantage of all of the storage we have added under mount, we're going to mount this back up to root. Save. And we'll click done. Now we're going to continue and give it um, a name and host name. Click done, skip for now, install open SSH server, and done. And that is the installer for the first VM. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the second one, and we'll get these set up. We'll connect through SSH and continue the setup. Now that the VMs are set up, we're going to install a few things. We're going to run sudo apt update, and then after that, we're going to do sudo apt install nginx lib ip set 13 keep alive d cert bot python 3 cert bot nginx. And we're going to install all of those. I'm going to copy this over to the other one. So we're installing Nginx, lib IP set 13, keep alive D, certbot, Python 3, certbot, Nginx. This is going to let us self-register certificates for websites uh, that's running on the cluster. Um, keep alive D is going to make sure we have the floating IP address. Lib IP set 13 is kind of just a supporting package to keep alive D. And the certbot is how the certificates are issued, I guess. Um, and then the Nginx plugin for that is what facilitates that connection with Nginx. And now that that is done, we're going to paste in this command here. We're going to edit this keepalive D file. And on the master node, we're going to paste this in. And then on the secondary node, we're going to paste this in. And we're going to make a few changes here. This is from Techno Tim's keepalive D guide. Um, so the virtual IP address we're going to set as 10.141.70.11. I don't know if that's a slash 24, but I think it'll be fine for this video. We're going to type in 10.141.70.11. And we're going to make a few changes to this. This is kind of just the password phrase or whatever um, to the virtual IP address. That way other devices cannot use the IP address and therefore mess with your configurations and mess with which device gets the IP. Um, the peer is going to be the opposite device. So 10.141.70.9 is going to be the first VM. And then I'm going to fill it in as the source IP, just like so. And then I'm going to paste this in as the peer, just like you can see here. So the other thing we're going to have to change is the interface names. So obviously these names probably don't work. So ENS18 is not the name. It's ENP6S18. And I'm going to assume that it's the same for both of these, just like so. Okay, and then now, um, since the primary node has a higher priority, um, that means that it's going to pull the IP address. So that's going to be the one that actually holds the IP address and um, maintains it. Um, unless this first node goes down in which it will fail over to the secondary one. So I'm going to save this on both of these. And I'm going to paste in the start command. And as you'll see on my ping down here, the ping should light up here in a few seconds. Um, and as you can see, we can now ping that IP address. This is the floating IP address. Now if I stop this on the main um, host, as you can see, I can still ping it from the other one. And if I start it and I stop it on here, you'll see that I can still ping it so it's working as we expect. It's failing over between the two servers. And now we can go into Nginx. We can create uh, virtual sites. Um, as you can see, we'll have the default site here. And you will be able to see that we can just paste in our Nginx conf configuration just like normal. 
Um, especially if we're doing like proxy passes, this works pretty well because the two servers can fail over. The other option is if you're hosting static files, this is also really nice. Um, the hard part is when you get to databases and stuff, you'd want like a highly available database that both these two um, Nginx VMs can reference. Um, but for the purposes of this video, it is set up the way we intended. So we have the two Nginx VMs that are highly available due to the floating IP address. This should work out to be a very redundant cluster um, that should give us a ton of availability. For updates, I would just update the secondary server first, make sure that's all working as expected, then fail over manually to the backup server, um, and then, then you can update the primary server. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is the QEMU guest agent. So we're going to install the QEMU guest agent, and I'll show you what this does here in a second. Um, we just got to install this. Um, I always forget to install this, but it's actually really nice, especially with Proxmox. So as you'll see here, it says guest agent is not running. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it here, and I'll show you what it does. So we're going to say sudo systemctl enable dash dash now QEMU dash guest dash agent. I'm going to copy this over to both these servers. And now you'll see that it actually gives you the IP address of the virtual machine. You can see some extra details as well. Um, and then if you ever go to shut down the VM, you actually, I believe it works with the VM to coordinate that shutdown and it's a bit smoother than if you were just doing it through Proxmox. I found that it normally works out a little better as well. So it's kind of beneficial to do that, especially if you're doing things like PCIe pass through. I believe the guest agent also helps coordinate that um, as well. So yeah, that's about all for this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'm sorry for this bar that's across the screen. I forgot to remove it. Um, but yeah, that's about all for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.